Hello, Technology Grays here, and welcome to the second episode of the series, How to Make a Hackintosh. Today, we're going to be putting together a computer, so if you're interested to see what is inside a computer, please stay tuned and enjoy. Okay, so here we have my pride and joy, my my Canadian flag towelie. It's it's pretty fantastic. It's made out of made out of beaver fur. -y. No, I know I'm just joking about that. Actually, we, here we here we have my Hackintosh, uh, and today we're going to be going over all the different parts and components of this Hackintosh, as well as how to assemble it and tips and tricks and stuff like that. Uh, so let's start with going through all the parts. Okay, so for a quick run through, we have our, our power supply there. We have our Beast graphics card, our CPU, and our CPU cooler. So we have liquid cooling with a radiator and a fan on the side. Uh, we have some more PCI slots, so if you wanted to get more graphics card or different stuff as well as Wi-Fi cards. Uh, we have our RAM slots on each side, and then we have our audio ports and all that stuff uh, that come right out of the board. And then on the side here, we have some more drive base, so we can have some hard drives as well as SSDs. In my case, also support some SSDs on the front of it as well as the other side. If you're wondering about this little thing on the side here, I actually hot glue that in. It's just a telephone uh, female connector uh, because I actually installed some uh, my custom LED lights, so blue LED lights on my desk as well as inside my computer, and that was just a way of supplying power to those LED lights without having to make my own power source. Okay, so the very first step of whenever you're assembling a computer or even touching any component inside is you want to make sure you're grounded. You want to get rid of all that static in your body, so touch the power supply. I uh, make sure that it's installed at this point. Uh, next, you can see the the screws on the side of my motherboard. Now, your case will actually come with these screws, as well as the little itsy bitsy mounting screws that go underneath your your board. So you have to install them in the correct position uh, because your your case will probably support different board sizes. So you have to find the correct size, install those little mounting screws underneath in the correct position. Okay, so next is probably a really good idea to install the CPU. Now mine's sitting underneath this water cooler right here, and the CPU is probably one of the most delicate pieces of the whole computer. It's really easy to break off the pins, so you want to make sure that you, um, you you place it in correctly, and read all the manuals of the motherboard as well as your Intel or AMD manual as well, because it'll go through step by step of how to align it properly, how to open up the brackets, and how to place it down correctly without breaking any pins, because if you do break something, uh, they tend not to replace it, so it's not the warranty does not cover if you damage your CPU. So you definitely want to take your time installing it. So the next few steps you can do in any order that you like, but I prefer to do the RAM next. So take out your RAM, make sure it's lined up in the correct position. Uh, you want to open up the brackets on your RAM, and then you want to slowly slide it in, and then you want to press firmly on each side and make sure that things snap in correctly. Uh, don't be afraid of putting too much pressure, but you don't want to like kill it. So, uh, I don't know, do it, do it nicely. Okay, so now we can start plugging in all the cables. So there should be some cables coming out of your power supply that you want to plug into the motherboard to supply it with power. Uh, there should be two of them, and generally the rule of thumb is if it fits, it's probably correct. Uh, there's not too many cords that you can really, really, really bust your computer. Uh, you do want to be careful, you don't want to jam something that looks like it's totally not going to fit. But if it looks like it's going to fit, generally it's, it's, it's good. Okay, so now you can slowly go through and make sure all the fans are plugged in. In this case, it said CPU fan, so I took the CPU fan, or in my case, the water cooler, and made sure it's plugged in. Uh, here you can see USB 1, USB 2, USB 3, as well as the F panel, which will house all the power buttons, the reset button, as well as the computer speaker, and uh, possibly LEDs if your computer case has any. Over here you can see a few more ports, including another USB 3, and uh, the audio ports, so you want to make sure that's plugged in too. Okay, so next we can plug in the hard drives or SSDs. So you want to locate the SATA ports on your hard drive, and some will be actually faster than others, so locate uh, the manual and try to find which ones are the fastest and plug your hard drives in there. You want to take the other side of the SATA cable and make sure it's plugged into your hard drive or SSD, and you also want to make sure that you're supplying power to it. So uh, there should be a few little extra slots on the power supply that you can actually run cables into the power supply and write to the hard drive. So you want to make sure everything has power. Okay, so now you can take your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or graphics card and slide it into the PCI slots labeled on your board. You want to make sure that you plug your graphics card into the very fastest one. Uh, I have two X16s, one X8, and one X4. Uh, so you want to make sure your graphics card is in an X16 if you have it. Now it's also important to note that some cards will need some power, so you want to take a cord and run it out of your power supply to that device. Okay, so at this point, just make sure that the heat sink is installed on top of the CPU correctly, or if you have water cooling, install that. And then you want to slowly go through and just make sure all the cables and fans are plugged in correctly. Once that's done, you can plug it in and start it up, 
and if it starts beeping at you like crazy, that means you did something wrong, and you can refer to the manual of the motherboard, and it'll walk you through all the problem-solving steps. Anyways, I guess that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please check out my playlist on how to make a Hackintosh. Links are in the description as well as annotated on your screen right now. Anyways, I guess that's all from Technology Crazy Goodbye, and enjoy your Hackintosh.